Hello and welcome to another GMBN Tech Weekly Show. Coming up on the show this week, we've got some information on that brand new lefty fork from Canada. That's that crazy looking single crown version. We've got some amazing top mods from you guys, and of course, all the other regulars. So straight into tech news, and the first thing I want to draw your attention to is that brand new lefty fork that's doing the rounds at the moment. So this is the brand new single crown version of the popular lefty fork. And in case you don't know, lefty is a single leg fork. It's a left leg, as you might have guessed. Operates in a very slightly different way to traditional forks, and it uses a twin crown system in order to be strong enough and stiff enough. But of course, the brand new model called the lefty Oco is actually a single crown fork. So it's 100 millimeters of travel on this new single crown version of the fork. It's air sprung as before, and there's carbon and aluminium options. 27 half or 29 inch wheel versions too, and as well as a whole bunch of other cool features on there, one of the best things is it's got the new chamber damper in there. Now previously, there wasn't anything structural that let the lefty down. It was actually the damping that wasn't quite up to par, as with other forks such as RockShox, X-Fusion, Fox, Mozaki, Devio, etc. Now this new damper promises a lot and from what I hear it does feel very good. So hopefully we're gonna get a go on this fork quite soon. Now the other thing that's quite different about this other than that amazing single crown design of the fork is the fact it's got a brand new quick release brake mount system. So on the older model of the fork, the brake mount itself to get the front wheel off, obviously the wheel would just slide straight off, but due to disc rotor being on there, you had to actually undo the two disc caliper bolts to actually take the caliper off in order to take the wheel off. So it wasn't actually that fast to do so. But the new one now has a single bolt and it takes the whole caliper off really, really speedy. You don't have to readjust anything. It just goes straight back on to the original position and you're good to go. And until we've ridden one, we can't tell you too much more, but I'm really excited to check out the structural feel of that fork because of the single crown. It just doesn't make sense when you look at the thing. I think it's a work of art. What do you think? You love a lefty or do you hate them? Let us know in those comments. Next up is something that's not necessarily new, but it's a really cool little tech thing. I think some of you guys might want to know about. It's called the Fork Cork, and it comes from a company called Miles Wide. Now this thing's pretty cool because it just basically bungs the bottom of your steerer tube and it fits on a tapered steerer tube. So there's quite a bit of space inside there to fit things like CO2 cartridges, multi-tools, money, all sorts of other little gubbins. Really neat design and uses an expander wedge style system with a dial on the bottom. So nothing's gonna come out once you put it in there. Of course, you'd want to use a plastic bag and make sure it's all wedged inside that steerage tube so it doesn't move. But yet it's another system for carrying stuff on your bike. One more reason to ditch the backpack completely. Of course, on those longer rides, you're always gonna need some sort of hydration pack. If nothing else, just to carry the large volume of water that you're gonna need. But of course, they're excellent for carrying spare parts, medical kits, multi-tools, all that stuff. But the little fork cork is a really cool little invention just for carrying the bare minimums along with the water bottle cage and some other stuff. Check them out, they're cool. Okay, so another new bike that's launched in the last week is the Pivot Mac 429. So this is a 29 inch wheel bike, but it's also available in 27 and a half inch now. 120 mil travel, it uses the DW Link system, and it's probably, along with the IBIS, one of the better versions on the market. Handles really well, they've really tailor-made their bike around this system, which is known for its anti-squat. So basically, when you're pedaling hard on an uphill, it resists that squatting and actually wants to stand up quite well. So really good, especially if your climbs in your area are technical of any kind. Now they retail for between 4,729 and 8,249 quid here in the UK. It's not a cheap bike by any means. And it's got that new longer reach and shorter back ends that everyone is, is doing these days. In this case on the XL, so we're looking at 480 or 474 mil reach, depending on if you run it with 29 inch wheels or 27 and a half. And of course that's roomy, it's plenty of roomy. It's about the same as that Canyon that I have but it's not one of the longer ones on the market. We're seeing them going up to 5.15, like that Nuke Proof I have. So it does sit there on the longer end for a short travel bike, but still we're seeing bikes going longer. However, Pivot are renowned for their really agile ride, so it's only gonna accentuate that. Really nicely finished bike, available in a couple of colorways as well. Check that one out. Now we talked about it on last week's show, but couldn't show you it. Here is that new Mondraker Foxy Carbon 29 inch wheel. Look at that thing, that is an absolute rocket ship. 
Super lightweight, 150 mil travel out back, 160 fork on the front. Can accept a coil shock or an air shock. Obviously the dropper posts on there, it's got Mondraker's patented forward geometry on there, which is where everyone started taking that longer reach concept that they developed way back in 2011, 2012. It's running 66 degree head angle up front. You can adjust that back to 65. So this thing really is aimed at going as fast as possible. Now, two particular things I like about this, other than the fact it's really nice and I like most things about it, is it's got a threaded bottom bracket shell. Now, Mondrake in the past on their carbon bikes, on a lot of them, they have had press fits. It is easier for production and that sort of thing, but the Dune, their enduro bike, has a threaded BB shell, and now this Foxy 29 Carbon also has that. So it does mean more reliability, more durability in the future coming from the bottom brackets that are gonna be fitted to that bike. Now also, it has a 44 mil offset fork on there. Now the offset on a fork crown is how far the legs sit forward of the crown. So imagine you have a 66 degree head angle, got nice and slack, but the offset actually makes it virtually steeper at a lower speed. So you've got more agile handling at lower speed, but you've got that stability of the slack head angle at a high speed. However, it does create a bit of a weird feeling between the two, and you can notice that on a bike. So Mondraker, along with a lot of other brands, are doing a shorter offset on the fork to get that overall consistency in the handling of the bike. Of course, it's a pretty serious bike, so you don't want any inconsistencies in the handling. So definitely one for the faster riders out there. There will be an alloy model coming down the line, but for now, this one is like a top flight, high-end trail and enduro race bike. And finally in news, something at the complete other end of the spectrum as far as bikes and price points go, is the Kotic Solaris Max hardtail. Now this frame retails for just 599 quid here in the UK. It accepts 120 to 140 mil fork, both 29 inch wheels and 27.5 inch wheels. And it's beautifully made from Reynolds 853 tubing. Now the lowdown on the bike, the specs are, it's got 444 mil chain set out back. So it's not the shortest, which is good, especially on a hard tag, you don't want it to be too skittish. Up front, you've got a 65.4 degree head angle and a 73.4 degree fairly climbing friendly seat angle on there. Of course, the steeper you go, the better it is for climbing, but also the less comfortable it is. So there is a fine line between the two, between performance and comfort on those. Now there's three colors, there's cosmic black, there's dark metal, and there's gloss bright green. So really three nice finishes on there, and it's got some really good long shot geometry, which is Kotick's take on their long low slack. So up front on there, you're looking at between 507 and 513 reach, which is massive. Just to remind you that the Scott and XL is 505 and the Nuke Proof is 515. So that's a really quite progressive hardtail for just 599. Check them out. Also on their website, they've got their own configurator. So you can spec the bike how you want it with a whole number of different forks and components on there and it prices it and builds it for you. So you can actually see if you actually want that option. Very cool. Okay, so I just want to take it into a few comments from last week's show now. I've been called out on this first one here. So this is from Dark Wader Movies. Sun is not the first company to do that, being a downhill bike anyway. Saracen already had done that on the downhill bikes, the mist range from 2013 onwards. So Dark Wader Movies is referring to the carbon fiber chainstay and the rest of the bike being aluminium. But I think you'll find that Saracen actually did this with the entire back end, not just the chainstays on there. Although you are correct in calling me out on that. My point with the Sun bike in, in particular was the fact that it was only the chainstay that was carbon, not the seat stay and not the front end of the bike. And of course, making a chain stay is probably one of the most expensive bits of the bikes. It's so intricate the design for the molding that has to be. And of course, one of the more easily damaged bits, which is why I also talked about that in relation to other bike brands that are making full carbon bikes except for the chain stay. So either way, it's pretty cool to see that, but nice one for bringing attention to about the Saracen bike because they're pretty far ahead of their time for what they're doing these days. Now, several of you were talking about the wheel options for the bike build. So first up, Hans Wehr says, how about some DTs? As far as I know, they make their spline for a boost and an unboost. You're right, and we're gonna talk about that later. Uh, Harry Johnston, trying to get, um, you should try and get some pre-built Hope wheel sets. They're not very expensive, and the hubs are bulletproof for the English winters. Yeah, that's also a really good point, and you can also buy all of the components for those hubs separately. So actually, that's a, a really good shout. But again, we'll come back to that. Uh, someone else commented on the X-Fusion fork. Uh, Dog Toy said, the metric HLR Rough Cup is way better than a 36 or Lyric. That's a bold statement. Um, you can convert it to coil as well for not much more money, uh, for even more plushness. I mean, the fork is stunning. 
can't say nothing about that. It's a really nice looking floor. All metal componentry on the inside on there. It's got really good high and low speed compression on there. A really nice rebound. I do agree that they do feel incredibly plush, but I've not spent a lot of time on them myself. But one thing I do really like about these forks is that you can notice a definite difference between each click of adjustment on them. Whereas on some of the forks, like the RockShox and the Fox, you can take two or three clicks of adjustment to actually really notice, unless you're quite pedantic about things. So this could well be the perfect fork for that Nomad. We shall see. Okay, now it's time for Bike Cave. This is where I get to check out where you guys work on your bikes and store your bikes, be at the back of the car, caravan, built shed in the garden, or a dedicated room in a house. Wherever it is, send them in. We love seeing this stuff. So first up is from Josse Radcliffe. Here's my new Bike Cave. I've just graduated uni with an engineering degree. Whew, nice work. I uh, live with two other engineering grads in Nampa, Idaho. I've got 2017 Specialized Enduro 29er hanging over the TV. The other bikes in my apart are my apartment mates. One's an old Gary Fisher Y-frame and the other is a Trek Marlin 29er. We don't have a ton of space, so we had to utilize it the best we can. I love the fact you've got that bike hanging up. That looks really cool. As well as the vertical one, the Trek there. Right by the sofa as well. That's kind of good. You could do a bit of a gear tweakage while you're having a beer on a sofa. But good to see that bikes are taking over your life and their priority, clearly. So nice work, Josia. Thanks for sending that in. Uh, next up is from Kevin McKenna. Hi, Dolly. Uh, Kevin from SoCal here. Loving that show. Watch it all the time. Here is my bike cave as I'm not riding at the moment because I've got broken ankle. So I now have time to clean it up a bit. Here's some pictures of my 2016 Ibis Ripley, Pivot Mac 5.5, S-Works Epic, Acrux, and Tarmac. Man, you've got a lot of bikes in there. Hopefully I'll be out riding again. Until then, I'm on this scooter. TV, oh nice. Oh, a bit of Neil in the dirt shed on there. Very nice looking workshop, actually, you've got to say. Oh, and I've just spotted probably the best thing in your garage, Pliny the Elder. That's a really, really good beer. And I, I can only say that now because my friend Scott from Ibis Bikes, he gave myself a Neil one when we were at Sea Otter. And when he gave us that beer, people were losing their minds asking where the beer came from. I never realized it was so good. And yeah, it's an excellent beer, that. And that's a very cool race face pint mug. Mug? I guess you call it a mug as well. Oh, there's the foot. Yeah, you're going to be out of action for a while. Beer and garage. That's the way, isn't it? Definitely. Well, get well soon. Hopefully you get yourself back in one piece. Good luck. Cheers, Kevin. Okay, last one. So this week is from Charlie Davis. Here's my bike cave and a stash of bikes I've collected over a lifetime, it seems. I used to sell all my old bikes to buy new ones, but realised I missed them and would rather hang them up on the walls. I'm with you there. I'm a bit of a hoarder myself. I've got a lot of stuff tucked away in a lot of different garages and, and uh, lofts and stuff. Flipping heck, how big's your man cave? Oh, you've got trophies up on the wall there as well. Yes, there's Colnago frames. Yeah, you're right. Pinarellos, Yetis, Chinellis, another Yeti. Dogma at the back there as well. And a Bianchi upside down. Is that fixy? Oh, nice. Mate, you've got some serious kit in here. There's a lot of it as well. Good to see like such a big space as well, actually. You're pretty lucky with that. Like, not many people are lucky enough to have a big space to sort of keep all their bikes and work on them. Nice to see that you clean them all, you store them really nicely as well. Proper BMX family going on here. Goes little red line cruisers, like midi cruisers down there. 20 inch GT up there as well, s and bars on it. Nice. There is something cool about keeping, I don't know, a bit of a Star Wars fan, little Moss Eisley badge on the wall. Very nice, Martin will love that. I'll definitely have to show him that, he will approve deeply. <laughs> very nice, thank you very much, Charlie, for sending that in. Don't forget, guys, you can all send in your entries, no matter how small or crammed in, even if it's a broom cupboard, whatever it is, send them in. Email address is on the screen right there. All right, now it is our rewind section time. This is the old, the old retro stuff that you guys send in, or perhaps I just want to tell you some cool stories about where the stuff today came from, how it developed. So first up this week, got some entries from you guys. So the first one is from Kevin McKenna, who actually entered Bike Cave. And the first picture is of his first ever proper mountain bike, and that was a Marin Indian Fire Trail. Now look at that. So that's got Manitou, I guess in there, Manitou twos on the front there. I do remember this is one of the aluminium frames from Marin at the time. Now this bike is named after one of those famous trails in Marin County, after a fire road that's very close to Repack itself. So that's really cool to see that one. And then his other bike is the bike he raced XC for about 20 years on. And this is a Dean 
Man, so that's a Manitou 3 on the front of that, titanium frame, control tech seat post. I can see you've got those red Ritchie WCS brake pads. You've got uh, Mavic SUP rims, I'm guessing 217s on a bike like that. Can't see what cranks you've got. It looks like you've got DX SPDs or possibly Onzas. Can't tell, you've got the ring lay bottle cage on there. And the thing that obviously stands out more than anything else is that dog poo color Tioga Psycho up front. So those tires at the time, they were so soft. I remember friends riding those and nobbles tearing clean off them. You know, kind of like a biscuit, milky biscuity color, dog poo sort of color. But somehow they're really nice. Love that radial front wheel, by the way. That was also a little bit of a phase everyone went through in that era of having their wheels laced up differently. Radial spokes or even snowflakes. I remember people coming to the bike shop and asking for snowflake wheels and myself and all the mechanics would just be like, oh God, leave it out. You don't want to on a do a snowflake but anyway enough of that so next up is from Alex Paulson um, a customer kindly let me buy his bike off him after telling me it was a 20 plus year old Santa Cruz crack free just needs a bit of loving before I rebuild it and hang it up somewhere my god yeah so that's a Santa Cruz heckler single pivot so that must be somewhere around well probably 94 95 I would guess Rock Shock, super deluxe shock on it the first time round when they made those with their characteristic red springs. Man, that's a nice trip down memory lane. Wicked. Thanks, Alex, for sending that one in. Next up, this is a pretty cool one. So this is from Stuart Fleming, who said, thanks for featuring my DIY Kona disc adapter a while ago. I thought you'd like to see a souvenir I've had since 1999 when I was lucky to see the UCI World Cup race in Stellenbosch, South Africa. This is an official guide to that 1999 World Cup, and there's a wealth of information there that you might want to see. Right, so here's the cover. So that is John Tomac and Brian Lopes on the front cover in a dual slalom race, or a, perhaps a dual race, it's hard to tell from here. Tomac, of course, riding his own bikes back then, and Lopes is on a Mongoose. So I've got one of Lopes's Mongoose tops from that era. In fact, it was from a UK bike show where Lopes came over to do a dirt jump competition. He broke his bike. And he ended up taking a bike off the stand. I think it was a muddy fox or something, and just ghost riding it. And his bike just went and just crashed. I don't think a lot of people liked him for doing that, but it was pretty funny, I have to say. Um, this is pretty cool looking in here. So technical knowledge and stuff. They got the Nokian Gazalotti 24 by 3 inch tire. Man, I remember that tire. That had like the worst compound. It may as well have been made of plastic, and it weighed about four tons. Those things. Rockshox boxer fork. Give me another inch. Said a bunch of Rockshox races last year. So now we've got forks with 151 mil of travel plus 12 millimeters of negative travel. Man, that's really cool seeing this stuff. And Shimano Airlines. Oh my god, I'd still love to have a try a pair of parallels. I never actually got to see a set in the flesh. Just heard all about them. I did see a set a while ago, someone sent me a link, I think one of you guys sent us a link to a brand new set on eBay that were for sale that hadn't been used. Mind blowing. And look at that double page advert for GT Bikes. Fast, it's corporate policy. That was a good series of adverts. That had some pretty funny ones back in the day. I seem to remember Andrew Herrick, who also worked for, as well as GT, he's done Intense recently, and Pedro's and Crank Brothers. He came up with a marketing strategy for this, and there were some amazing adverts back in the day. But this one is obviously just showing off the team and the mechanics and all the people behind the scenes. So if you look on the far left, that's Doug Hatfield. He was like the mechanic of Santa Cruz Syndicate. Now you see him on a load of those videos. And look on top of the Jeep there. Well, I think it's a Chevy, but top right, that's Andy Kiffin. So he was Steve Pete's personal mechanic for a long time. And he's still floating around on the mountain bike scene. Really cool to see. Oh man, you've got everything. And a swatch advert with Palmer in it. Oh, that photo, that looks like the one that's taken by a friend of mine, Jeff Waugh. In fact, I've got a signed print of that, signed by Palmer, taken by Jeff Waugh. Very cool. Hey, nice to see that. Thanks for sending that in, Stuart. Another great trip down memory lane. If there's anything that you guys want to know, past, present-ish, and where it came from, let us know, and we'll try and dig some information up for you. See you next week. Now it's time for Top Mods. This is where you guys send in the modifications that you've been doing to your bikes over the last few weeks, months, days. Now, don't be put off by this. It could be the smallest thing in the world that you've done, even just accomplishing the feat of changing a cable and indexing your gears. Counts as a modification in my eyes. Whatever it is, send them in, we wanna see them. First one this week is from Brian Delorme. Here's my best shot at the Top Mod. I'm a devoted viewer coming to you from Vermont in the United States. Thanks for providing such detailed advice and giving us courage to work on our own bikes. Hey, that's what it's all about. Of course, 
you should go to your bike shop here and there where you need some advice and you need a bit more help and experience. But if we can help you at any part of the way, then that's great. We're doing our job. So thanks for watching and tuning in. So your modifications on your Santa Cruz 5010, very nice bike, by the way. Uh, Maxxis DHF skin walls on there. That's pretty cool. They look nice. RockShox Reverb Drop Lever. I absolutely love those. Now, the original lever did work really nicely, but when you're riding on bumpy terrain, it's actually quite hard because you have to move your thumb sort of above the bars almost to use them. So yeah, not ideal, but that new one is so much better, so much more intuitive to just use the whole time. I definitely recommend anyone trying that out if you have got a reverb yourselves. Uh, specialized power arc saddle. Nice fingerboard grip tape on the controls. Yeah, that's a really good little hack. I'm well into that one. Local club membership band to tidy up my cables. That's a cool way of using that. And my trail dog who always rides with me. Oh man, that is so cool. Yeah, loving that you're repping all the stickers as well for all your local stuff. That's really good. Reverb, always a nice modification to make. And I love the fact that you're doing the grip tape as well. That's quite a pro hack. A lot of the top guys run that stuff. I like the Arc 24 rims as well. They're good though, so I was looking at those for the uh, bike build. Nice. And of course the saddle, always good with the old gooch gap on them to keep them comfy for extended periods. And everyone loves a trail dog, right? Now the next one really is a quite a cool modification. So this is from Simply Fly, who says, my 11 year old son and I have been busy building a small full suspension trail bike. He has been riding a 24 inch wheel bike that we built up from parts and ran fully rigid, but he's soon to outgrow it. And we spent hours looking for the bike that's still small enough for him, but that will accept a 26 inch wheel. So far, we've looked at the Transition Ripcord, uh, Rocky Mountain Reaper, and the Common Cell Supreme Junior. Of all the lot, we really like the Common Cell. However, it uses 27 and a half inch wheels, which really is too much of a jump for him to go from 24. Yeah, I get that. And of course, it is quite pricey as well. Uh, so we searched and searched for an extra small 26 and found almost everything we're looking for in a 2004 Rocky Mountain Element 70. I remember those quite well. Uh, the bike we got came with an older 100mm travel Sid fork and as you know a relatively steep head angle as it is an XC bike. However we fitted a 24 inch rear wheel from his existing bike and kept the 26 in the front. Got a slightly tall standover and a bit of a high bottom bracket but the effect of using a 24 inch wheel has actually lowered it and slackened it out. Hey that's a pretty cool bargain bike you've got yourself there so you've actually got a really decent bike in the first place but it's small enough to fit him and of course being 26 isn't on everyone's agenda who's jumping to 27 and a half and 29 but for a first time rider getting to grips of bikes and growing with them that is fantastic. Hey that's really nice and that's a really cool mod. I would love to see some more mods that people have done on kids bikes out there. We've got some friends who've done the 24 inch stinky Kona bike modifications before and a whole bunch of other things. But if you've got any mods you've made to younger rippers or even small people's bikes, we'd love to see them because it's really helpful for others. So tech of the week this week is the Rilo camera. So this is a, a brand new contender on the action camera market, which of course is quite saturated, but you know, GoPro is the, the one that you go to. Of course, there's a lot of other ones out there. But this little fella is a little bit different. It's designed exclusively to use with your phone and direct to social media. There's no desktop application. There's no way of transferring files to the computer other than you beaming them there from your phone via AirDrop or whatever equivalent you might use. Now the benefit of that is it's super easy to use and the software is really powerful. So the guys behind Rilo Camera pioneered that software first and then had the hardware built to work with it. So it does mean that it's very powerful, but it doesn't slow your phone down like some other camera software that exists on the market already. Now it records 360 at 4K and each of those two cameras on there, there's one on the front and one on the back, they can be used separately, they can be used for panoramas. They're 208 degree cameras, so they actually go slightly past the actual virtual stitching line that the software makes. And it's almost seamless. When you mount them on your handlebars, you can just about see it, but when you mount it on the top of your helmet, you can't see it at all. Now, the thing that is so cool about it is the stabilization. You just don't need a gimbal with it. It's absolutely amazing. Now, I haven't had too much chance to get out and use it, but if you look on screen, here's a quick shot of me just riding through Bath past the Abbey, beautiful city we're lucky enough to work in here. Now, you tap on the screen anything you want to track, and as you can see, it's tracking as if it's moving by itself. Don't forget, it records 360 the whole time. So I can just track any object I want it to look at, in which case 
Bath Abbey here, and it will follow it all the way around. Really, really cool feature. And then by pinching out on the screen, you get this tiny planet effect. So the exact same bit of footage from a totally different and quite a unique view. Of course, that's not gonna work everywhere. It's quite a novelty, but it's a pretty cool thing to just be able to play around with. You can take stills from that. You can bash them up on Instagram. Super easy to save the files from it. Now I have had one run through our local woods, which I do have to confess is pretty flipping dark in there at the moment because the canopy is so green and lush, but it did seem to struggle a little bit in the low light. And I think it might be the stabilization on the software. I've got to play with it, but look how smooth that image is. When you look at it on a phone, it is incredibly good. The detail in it is so good. But when you look at it on a big computer screen, it's not quite up there with the GoPros and that, but this is designed to be used directly with your social media platforms, with your Facebook and with your Instagram. And I'm gonna be posting some images and some footage on the GMBN Tech Facebook page over the next few days. So you will see that for yourselves. Let us know what you think about this. Would you wanna use one of these or do you think a GoPro is still where it's at? Personally, I think for what most people want to use these for, recording a run with their mates, capturing all the action, I think this could be a winner. But if you're a young budding filmmaker, the GoPro does have some more detailed features on it that this, at this stage, doesn't have. But right, I've got to say, they've definitely got potential. Okay, so now it's just a very quick bike build update. I did say to you last time I was gonna get busy ordering stuff and I have been doing that. So obviously we've got the fork here, we've got that X-Fusion which has been custom built. Um, I might have not explained that properly. Currently at the moment, there's none in the UK and this is completely built from spare parts. So I will be looking at getting it custom tuned and set up at a later date, but currently it's the only one there is in this orientation in the UK, which is very cool. But like I explained, it was a bit limiting on the wheels and a few of you commented on the Hope wheels, a few of you said DT. I actually spoke to people at DT and they're gonna be sending us some E1900 spline wheels, which have 25 mil internal width and they retail for just 325 quid for a set of those wheels in the UK. So that's really good from that budget point of view to try and keep that price down, which is the sole aim. And as I know that those DT wheels will be set up tubeless, they work really well tubeless. And of course, 20 mil front, 148 boost out back. So that's perfect. Now there's an E13 cassette, it's been in the post now, so it's definitely gonna be here soon. Seat post, I've decided that, unless you guys call me up on this, I've decided I wanna put the bike yoke post on there. Now it might not be the cheapest one out there, but I do love the fact it's easily user serviceable. And unlike some of the hydraulic posts out there that when they do get the air swapped on the inside and you have to have them serviced, it has that bleed valve built into it. So I'm really keen to have that post on there because it's a fit and forget item in my eyes. You're not really gonna need to do much to it, but you can do it yourselves at home. So that alone surely is qualifies for going on a bike. You know, I'm trying to give you something that's gonna last in longevity of the bike and also something you can look after. Um, now, the other little thing that I'm gonna put on there, it's only a tiny thing, but I've talked about milk it valves quite a lot. I'm definitely gonna spec some of those on the bike because they might just be tubeless valves, but I love the system. They don't clog up. You can take the valve core out of them and you don't lose any tire pressure because of the way they seal up. I just think they're a really, really cool extra to have on the bike. And it does mean that they're just not gonna clog up in future. So I'm all for that. Those milk it valves, are wicked. Next week, I'm actually going to be away. I'm going to be going to the Nova Mesto XC World Cup. So I'm not going to have access to the bike itself here in the set. But the following week, I'm going to start showing you some of these bits because a lot more of it is going to be here. And hopefully at that point, we're going to start putting a few things on it. So at least get a headset in there, get the fork in there, get the cranks on there. By then, I'm hoping to have a bar and stem as well. So it's suddenly going to start taking a bit of bike shape to it. So there we go, there's another GMBN Tech weekly show in the bag. That was our 20th show, so thank you for all the supporters out there. Let us know in the comments what you think of the show, any particular things you like, maybe some stuff you wanna see in the future, and then we'll discuss this and see where things might go. For a couple more great videos, click down here for speed and style setup choices. So that's Blake and Neil talking about how they set the bikes up for their very different styles of riding. I'm sure that's gonna to relate to a lot of you out there. And for something a bit more on the fun side, click up here for my trailside maintenance hacks. This is a bit tongue in cheek, absolute get you home, worst case scenario fixes. You can do the side of the trail yourself with just a few things. So there's actually some good stuff in there. So have a look at that one and see what you think of that. As always, click on that round globe to subscribe. There's new content for you every week here on GMBN Tech. And of course, if you like the show, give us a thumbs up.